In this video, we're going to cover something very important, the factors which affect option value, um, both call options and put options. You have to really know these, whether an option, uh, an option's value will increase or decrease when a certain parameter, a certain factor changes. Um, yeah, so let's, so let's get cracking. The first one, um, which I don't think should be, a, you know, necessarily a big deal, is the value of the underlying asset. So, value of the underlying. We're talking about the current value of the underlying, and in all previous videos, I was saying that, you know, before the option hits its maturity date, we will be de denoting this as S, the spot price of the underlying asset, with lower index T as opposed to capital T, which is the value of the underlying at the um, at the maturity date. So let's start with a call option. We're going to view things from the point of view of the um, of the investor here. So if I was to draw the um, what happens to the value of a call option, um, a long position in the call option, that would be X, the exercise price, of course, and uh, you know how the payoff at maturity works depending on where ST is, if it's on to the right or to the left of X, we get a payoff which kind of looks like this, goes diagonally up there, and here we've got zero. However, at any point between, uh, sorry, before maturity, if you really want to uh, measure the option's true value, um, so the value of a call option would be small case t followed by the index small case small case c sorry and small case t you would get something that looks more like so in the sense that the distance um over here is um is composed of two elements for example this would be the option's exercise value more or less the difference between st and x although you know when we had the formulas for x we were uh, for our exercise value we were doing some discounting to x always and this additional component is time value isn't it so for example over here where the option is evidently out of the money uh, the entire value of the option the entire CT, call option value, is composed purely 100% of time value, seeing as exercise value is equal to zero. Right. Anyway, um, you will for sure appreciate, you know, that if ST goes up in the case of call option, so if we move that way, the value, um, if, if, the, if ST goes up, if the value of the underlying goes up, the value of CT goes up, the value of the option goes up as well. Even when the option is deeply under, you know, out of the money, if the underlying starts moving that way, it increases the probability that we'll finally end up here. And if we are already over here in the sort of in the money territory, then naturally moving that way increases option value as well. Um, in later stages of the CFA exam uh, examinations, you'll be, you know, you'll have to understand that relationship a, li a little bit more. But let me tell you for now is that there is a measure that we use to assess option values uh, sensitivity, the, the degree to which uh, the value of an option changes as a result of changes to the underlying asset. And that magnitude um, the magnitude of call option value change, CT is the value of the call option, due to changes in ST, we, we call that delta, and it's a very important measure for, uh, for derivatives. And I guess one more thing here. Your book kind of talks about this. If an option is deeply in the money, so over here, you'll see that the um, if I was to draw a line tangent to this, you would get a slope of more or less plus one in the sense of delta is close to plus one 
for deeply in the money options um call options in the sense that going let's say one dollar across here produces a one dollar upward move like a one for one relationship whereas if the a call option is sort of deeply out of the money. So over here, trying to draw a slope or a line tangent to this produces something which is close to zero. So close to zero for deeply out of the money um, options, both calls actually and, uh, and puts. So, uh, you know, something to potentially be aware of if you, if, you, if you get such a question, although I doubt it, not perhaps at level one. Um, and be aware that in the case of forward contracts, your, your curriculum does mention this, for forward contracts, if you were to compute delta, well, remember, forward contracts never have anything like um, time value. Uh, everything there is just a sort of linear straight payoff line. So if that's ST and that's X, you're going to get a value um, which looks for a long position uh, like that. So that's a long forward position. And here, the delta, which we symbolize with this symbol, is plus one. Because if ST changes, Let's say by one dollar, this produces an equivalent change um, to to the value of the uh, long uh, position. Right. Um, what about a put? So that was a put option. What about so that was a call? That what about a put, uh, which we denote by uh, the value of a put, small case p followed by small case t. Same or similar story here. Um, our range of ST values, X being the exercise price, and over here, something going, you know, a payoff going diagonally up at a 45 degree angle, and the value of the put. Maybe let me use the color red. Will be something you know like this. Not necessarily very happy with it. <laughs> okay. Anyway, uh, you could once again start drawing lines lines that are tangent, and here it would be a slope of plus one. Here, uh, you know, kind of half. Here, hmm, this would um, go down to almost zero. But I don't want to talk sen about sensitivities anymore. Uh, more importantly, if st um, sorry, ST grows. If the value of the underlying changes that way, the put option loses a value for its holder. As you can see, it's a, it's a negative slope over here as opposed to a positive slope for the call option. Okay, let's explore the next factor. That is um, the exercise price. So something that we were have previously been denoting and still will de be denoting as x. Um, okay, let's let's start with the value of a call option. Once again, exploring a long position in a call. So that's going to be our st. Sorry, over here is x, and this is the uh, payoff at maturity uh, sort of profile. And look, um, the payoff at maturity for a call option is, as you'll surely remember, the maximum of zero. And ST, capital T, um, minus X. So actually, I could have I could have, drew, could have drawn this as, um, as, ca as capital T. And as you can surely see, if we increase X, meaning push it to the right here. Obviously, that's not possible for an existing option. This is more a concept that we would apply to uh, compare options with different exercise values. But if you make x bigger, then um, this payoff, assuming the option, um, option um, um, matures in the money, 
Anyway, this payoff will be lower. And anyway, it will be more difficult. You may think about this uh, this way. If you have an option with a call option with a higher exercise price, it will be more difficult for the spot price of the underlying to reach that required level, the exercise price from which we start having an option that is in the money. So payoff lower here if X is bigger, and that obviously will work against the value of the call option. Its value at, uh, you know, at the time T will naturally uh, drop. So X increasing will cause the value of the call option to drop. Very different story for puts. In the case of a put option, if you draw the same um, sort of picture, STX, and this is the payoff at maturity. This is where the option is in the money, and here it's out of the uh, money. Well, what would happen if X was increased? And one very logical way to think about this, by shifting X up, you are increasing the territory um, or the, the set of values where uh, the option is in the money, which is, you know, which is where you want your option to be. Uh, and you're shrinking the size of the area or the, 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 the range of prices where the option is deemed to be out of the money. Um, you know, good thing all around. Um, and to maybe put things in a more sort of mathematical way, of course, the payoff at maturity from a put is the maximum, of course, of zero, and this time x minus st. So if x is increased, or if you've got an option with a higher x, this term goes up, making the payoff uh, better, obviously assuming the option matures within the in the money territory but the payoff becomes higher that will have a positive impact on uh, put option value right so that was the second uh factor let's use let's utilize the space over here to explore the third one very important the time to expiration how much time the option has left and obviously that's not something you can change for an existing option but once again, it's a useful, um, what we'll do here will provide arguments for the comparison of otherwise similar options, which differ by having different times to maturity. So time to expiration or time to maturity is absolutely linked to the concept of time value. And you will remember uh, that time value is a component of option uh, value alongside exercise value and it reflects the probability or the likelihood that um, sorry that um, favorable changes favorable changes will occur in terms of um, the spot price of the underlying changing favorably to increase, to augment the payoff at maturity. If you go back one video, you may recall how we drew dispersions for a given level of volatility, you know, what happens if there is more time left. So generally, and universally, more time will have a positive effect on time value. And that should lead to the value of the option overall to increase. However, there is going to be an important um, disclaimer here that I'm going to make in just a moment um, for put options. But you have to wait a little to, to, to see that logic. Right, so in terms of increasing time value, yes, the effect is positive. Now, what about the impact on exercise value? 
Well, this is where it gets a little bit tricky and you have to separately analyze this for calls and puts. You will hopefully recall that the exercise value of a put option is given as the maximum of zero and s lowercase t minus the present value of x. This is where we did x times one plus r into the power of time left to maturity. Now, because we're supposed to compute the present value of x here, more time means more time for the discounting. And whenever you discount you know, anything across a longer period of time, it becomes lower for a given um, interest rate. More time makes the PV of X lower. And because we are deducting this PV of X, it will um, lead to a higher exercise value because this term becomes higher as a result of the PV of X being lower and this being deducted from some ST. Um, so in the case of calls, you've got a very clear relationship. More time makes for more time value, but also for higher exercise value. So that the, com the two components of option valuations change in the same direction. Um, if you feel this may be difficult to remember, I would um, also encourage you to think in the following way. Um, calls are options to buy the underlying in the future for a known price X. And because they involve buying something, um, or contain the right to buy something, this X is a future expense, it's a future outlay. And the more you delay it, the more time there is left until the money has to be spent, that X uh, uh, is spent. Obviously with options there is nothing forcing you to spend it, but potentially spend it, the less uh, you will have to pay in terms of current present value. So I like to think of it this way. Call options um, have, a, have the right to pay something in the future embedded, and the more time there is left until it has to be paid, the lower the present value of it. Uh, and um, because it's an outlay uh, and its present value becomes lower, good for me, the person who will potentially in the future have to make it. Right, now let's move on to puts. Here the argument becomes a little bit uh, more fuzzy because Um, puts involve potentially the future possible sale of the underlying once again for a known amount X. So X is something that we will be receiving. It's going to be an inflow. And if you're receiving something or looking forward to receiving something potentially, you would like the value of that receipt to be as high as possible. However, longer time makes the PV of X lower. Uh, and because it's an inflow, that's bad news for you. Another way to... Uh, portray this is by once again re reverting to the exercise or resorting to the exercise value formula. For puts, it's the maximum of zero. And now, PV of X minus ST. So you can clearly see that more time left until maturity will make this term lower, just like it made this term lower, but this time, it doesn't have a negative sign in front of it, it has a positive sign. So 
if you make this lower, unfortunately, exercise value will be lower as well, unless it's, it's at zero. And the thing is, for puts, you've got opposite things or opposite effects taking place. On the one hand, time value is increasing, but exercise value is dropping as a result of more time um, in the option. And the argument is that for a certain type of put option, but let me tell you, let me, show, well, let me first draw the uh, picture for put options. So that's ST, that's X, that's the pay of sort of at maturity. But if you wanted to draw a put option diagram, let me do this as well as I can. Yeah, you see the amount of time value a put option has or any option has depends whether it is in the money, out of the money, etc., etc. And options typically display a lot of time value around here, around the exercise uh, value, uh, around the at the money sort of range. However, over here, there is very little time value, but a high amount of exercise value. Exercise, exercise value being sort of uh, this this proportion here, but very small amounts of time value. And in the case or for deeply, this should be deeply in the money put options. So options which are sort of here. The increase in time value that occurs as time is increased will unfortunately be not big enough. It's going to be smaller than the drop in exercise value, which results from this PV minus X becoming a lower term. So the drop to this is going to be big enough to outweigh the increase in time value. And therefore, such options will not benefit from an increase in time because they're so in the money. You would like to receive this uh, expected cash flow as, uh, you know, as soon as possible. So here and only here, time increasing will have a negative effect on, but only on deeply in the money put options. For other put options, that should not happen. The increase in time value should outweigh the drop in, in exercise value. Later on at the end of this video, I'll summarize everything in a table um, and I'll make sure we, we um, note that as well. Okay, the uh, next and fourth factor we want to explore is the level of the risk-free rate, obviously associated with the fact that we discount in order to um, arrive at exercise value. Um, that's where uh, we've seen R, the interest rate, appearing. Um, once again, let's write down the exercise value formula. First for call options, so call exercise value, the max of zero and um, ST minus the present value of x and um, you know this is a future payment that's why it's got a negative sign in front of it and if the interest rate r becomes higher then the pv of x drops the value of a future today the present value of a future payment drops and that will have an absolutely positive impact 
on the value of our call option. So the same story as with additional time um, having the same impact on the PV and therefore the entire call option value as an increase in R. If we write out the formula for a puts exercise value, well, the max of once again zero and the present value of x minus st and if r goes up then the pv of x naturally once again goes up but now it's a positive term not a negative term here so that reduces overall exercise value and naturally also reduces the uh, value of the put option so over here pt drops nice and simple and remember you know it's it's always or for me at least easier to think in terms of the fact that this in the case of a put put option is not a future payment it's a future proceed it's a future inflow so a higher discount rate will make its present value lower and because it's something positive being an inflow i don't want it to be lower your book is also uh careful to state that the risk-free rate does not, or its level, does not directly impact time value, the time value component, So, which is why we focused on the exercise value component of an option's overall total value, CT or PT. Okay, let's move on to the next um, factor. Uh, just this one left and 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 one more here um this is going to be sorry the volatility um of the underlying asset or just the underlying so how volatile is s um now higher volatility a greater degree of volatility increases the likelihood uh, of a positive change. Positive or favorable. Maybe I should substitute this with favorable because it doesn't mean necessarily to the right uh, higher. Uh, that would be favorable for call options, but it's also the likelihood of put options becoming in the money or more in the money and that will be associated with a downward change in the underlying so a favorable change in the underlying and look here it's really important to emphasize the one-sided nature of this analysis um if you take a an axis on which we'll label the current price of s Let's say we've got a call option, right? This is its exercise value. So here, uh, you know, we've got that promise or a hope for a positive payoff on a call option and the upside gains. And let's say ST, the underlying is currently here. If the asset is experiencing only very little volatility, then, uh, you know, it's pretty much staying where it is, it's staying put, then, you know, the probability that we'll make it all the way here isn't very high. It's more probable that we will either go this way or that way, only a little bit. It's kind of 50-50. However, the more of dispersion, the more volatility there is, the higher the chance we will potentially go that way or that way a lot. And if there is even more volatility in the asset, if it becomes really sort of jerky, then the chances increase that we will end up here, which gets us into this positive, positive territory. Obviously, there's also a higher likelihood that we'll go that way strongly. But look, if the option is or stays out of the money, how deeply you go that way doesn't hurt you really because the payoff's going to be zero anyway. But if 
we also increase the chance of going that way due to the higher velocity, that all of a sudden produces bigger expected payoffs due to the possibility that we'll get into this territory. So going that way strongly doesn't hurt us any more than um, it has all, you know, any more because the payoff is going to be zero anyway. The one-sided nature of options makes volatility something positive. Okay, um, let's take the last one. And that's going to be any income or also costs um, associated with owning the underlying or related to owning the underlying asset. And in just a moment, I'll be making a summary of all these factors. Uh, so don't worry, they'll come up again. Right. How, do, how should you think about this? Well, a call option entails the possibility to make a future purchase of an asset. So a call is associated with a future buying, a future purchase of an underlying asset. Mind you, in the future, at some future point in time. So if the asset produces some income, think about shares producing dividend income or bonds producing interest income, any income paid by the asset or produced by the asset until that date T when the option um, matures will not be received by the call option holder will not be received. So the more income there is, which you as the owner of a call option, not the actual asset, um, the, the more income an asset will produce, well, that will have a negative impact on the value of your call option. So as the level of income grows or is higher, less value in the call option. But flipping things around, if the asset entails costs, costs of storing it, for example, as would be the case with various commodities, then these costs will be avoided by the call option holder. So higher costs make the value of a call option actually bigger. Um, wait, wait, wait. Yes, higher costs make uh, the uh, value of an option uh, larger because you as the option holder will not hold the asset. You'll have the right to buy it in the future. But in the meantime, you're not incurring, will be, you know, you're, you're avoiding the cost. Somebody else is paying for the keeping of that asset or its maintenance, etc. Now, similar arguments to be made for puts. A put entails a possible future sale of an asset. And think about, you know, somebody who holds the asset and has the right to sell it in the future. That may not be the case. You don't, you don't have to own an asset to write a put option on it. You may sort of write a naked put on an asset that you don't possess. But if it helps, uh, I've, I would strongly advise you to think in the, in the following logic. If I've got an asset and have the right to sell it in the future to someone, any income that this asset produces, um, any income produced by the asset, will flow to me. So that increases the value of my put option, the ability to sell the asset at a future date, not yet. In the meantime, it will produce income for me. However, any costs associated with owning the asset will unfortunately not be avoided. Um, so costs 
will be incurred by the put option holder incurred until uh, T, until the maturity date, just like here income produced by the assets asset until time T will accrue to me, but I will also have to cover the costs and that reduces the value of a put option. Okay, let me wipe all of this off and summarize all of the information that we've covered. Okay, let's finish this very important video with a summary of the effects that the various factors which we have discussed may have on option values, be they call options, so call value, uh, CT, or put values, P small case T. The first one we did was uh, the value of the underlying. So let me write that down maybe here. Value of the underlying being ST. It's always helpful to draw yourself a little chart, a little uh, graph for how a call works versus a put. At least I find that highly beneficial. And of course, if ST increases, for a call that means going towards further into in the money territory, so a positive impact on the value of a call option. ST increasing in the cases of puts drives us towards out of the money territory, so a negative impact here. The next factor was um, the value of X, the exercise price. But once again, if that's X, what happens if you mix, make X higher? Well, for a call option, uh, going this way means you're making it more of a challenge for the option to become in the money, and that reduces the value of the call. However, if that was your X, original X on a put, and you you know, wanted a new X, or if you were comparing one option with another with different exercise values, which was which probably the context in which you would have to think about this. Well, that option with the higher X has a much wider territory of when it's in the money and uh, the value of the underlying doesn't have to drop so much for the option to become profitable. So a higher um, X high exercise value will have will, will will be associated with more value for a put. Okay, next factor was the time to expiration, and you will remember that when we discussed this, I said for call options, nice and easy, more time leads to additional time value, but also additional exercise value for a call. However, for puts. That tends to be generally the case. However, there may be a negative effect, and this is possible in the case of or for deeply in the money puts and only that. However, such exceptions obviously make for perfect exam. Um, material question exam material um, uh, exam question material now the next was the risk free rate and here it helps to think of you know what the option entails uh, in the case of calls it's a future purchase of something and if the risk free rate becomes higher the value of that future um, spend, the, the value of the future purchase or the outlay which you'll need to make in the future, well its present value becomes smaller so the risk-free rate increasing has a positive impact on the value of a call. Different for puts, opposite for puts. Why? Because in a put option you're getting yourself up, well you're setting yourself up for a possible future sale of something and receiving X the exercise price and if the risk-free rate goes up the present value of that future receipt 
that future proceed in, uh, inflow becomes smaller. Um, next factor was the volatility of the underlying. And here I'm happy to report that the effect is the same always higher volatility of the underlying irrespective of whether it's a call or a put increases the option value so that's nice and easy and the sixth one was well actually two things income related to owning the underlying or costs uh, related to the same thing, owning the underlying. Okay. If you've purchased a call option, you maybe will become the owner of the underlying in the future if you choose to exercise the option, but the assumption is you're not the owner yet. So any income which the asset produces, the underlying produces, doesn't flow to you yet. Bad for you and bad for option value or, you know, a negative effect on option value. However, because you're not the owner yet, somebody else is the owner of the assets, you also avoid suffering or incurring on any of the costs associated with that asset, which is not yours yet. And if such costs exist and are potentially high and somebody else has to bear them in the meantime, cover them in the meantime, good for you and good for the option that you hold. Completely different story or opposite story for the puts. If you hold an a put option, the assumption is perhaps you are already the owner of the asset which you are, um, which uh, you may sell in the future for a known price. And if that asset is generating any income until the option maturity, those will flow to you, so good for you and your option value. Uh, however, you also have to suffer all the costs, so bad for you. Um, I think it's easy to think in these terms, create a story around it, some context, instead of just you know remembering these, trying to remember them. Um, if you don't get the logic behind such um, little um, little ex you know ways to explain it to yourself and build stories around it, it would be difficult, I think, to explain or to remember which which way the arrows or the signs point.